Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gentle Typhoon and the Hurricane. This is part of my redone series where I redid all of my fan testing with a new fan test testing methodology. Let's get right into it. So before we get into things too much, I completely updated my whole testing methodology. I have a short little piece on my channel, but uh, the short answer is my original testing methodology, I found that I was getting a accuracy rating of plus or minus four decibels. So that is an eight decibel range, which is too high. It's too big a range overall. My new test methodology gives me an accuracy of plus or minus two decibels. So that is a four decibel range. So it is around twice as good right now. Um, and as a note for decibel reading, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. I would like to upgrade everything with my whole test methodology, but I can't do without support from viewers like you hitting that subscribe button and joining me on Patreon or, well, I would need a sponsor of some kind because I want to upgrade my uh, sound testing chambers so that I can drop my noise levels for basic sound testing to a much lower level than my room's ambient 30 decibel plus. I want to get a dedicated microphone for noise testing as opposed to one you're just hearing me record on my voice. Uh, upgrade my uh, case simulation box, uh, a better anemometer, one with a higher accuracy, closer to 0 0.01 meter per second accuracy as opposed to plus or minus 0.1 meters per second because that would help uh, separate the fans out come much further for fine tuning and a couple other little things like that to build myself a test system uh, but once again I can't do it help for help from viewers like you and if you're wondering the old test methodology isn't completely inaccurate it's just I'm not going to be using it going forward basically the case it set up was if a mesh filter was directly over top of the fan or you had the fan in a pull configuration on a heat sink. That's where the previous test me te testing methodology, can I speak, uh, would be uh, still accurate and usable, but I'm rolling that testing in a different way going forward. So I just don't think it's uh, necessary to do it that way. The new test methodology is more like an open air environment, how the air is gonna go through an actual case, like how a person would actually use these fans. So, um, well, if you want me to roll more stuff into my testing, just leave it, leave, it the, leave it in the comment sections down below so that I know what all of you would like to, me to actually test because right now I'm just doing what makes sense to me. Um, anyways, we've got uh, in the graphs my original testing methodology and the new testing methodology. So in the graphs, we've got the original testing methodology and the new testing methodology. They're gonna, gonna have the fan ranking as it was originally. Um, the fan name, the RPM it was running, and the air speed. We're going to have it for the new methodology. And at 100% PW fan signaling, we have one additional column, and that is the noise level. If you're new to my channel, I encourage you to watch the second part of this video, which is where I go into each of the graphs and get, like, deep dive, explain everything for the actual airflow that's going through all the different pieces, the noise levels, the graphs for a wide variety of ranges and how they come direct, more directly compare in a visual orientation. But if you're returning to this channel, this is just a brief overview of a was now scenario so that if you are crunched for time, whatever, you can just watch this part real quick and move right along. But if you wanna watch the second part, I'd certainly like that too. All right, let's get into it. So first up, for the Gentle Typhoon versus the Hurricane, and we include the Ventro Pro. So they are in alphabetical order. In the original testing methodology, the, the, the testing methodology, the Gentle Typhoon was ranked fourth overall, spinning at 2,185 RPM for noise normalized through my CPU air cooler, moving two meters per second of air. In the new testing methodology, it is ranked eighth, spinning at 1,300 RPM, moving 1.3 meters per second of air. The Hurricane was ranked 24th, uh, moving 1.2 meters per second of air. It is now ranked 11th, so a great improvement there. Moving at a similar, but slightly higher, about 100, not quite 100, maybe like 80 higher, 100 and, or 1,435 RPM, moving 1.2 meters per second of air, so approximately the same air speed. And the Ventro Pro was ranked third. It is now ranked fifth overall. Was spinning at over 2,000 RPM. Now it's spinning at just under uh, 1,300 RPM. At 100% PWM fan signaling through the CPU air cooled, the General Typhoon was ranked 12 and retains that position. The Hurricane was ranked 37th and retains that position. And the Ventral Pro, which is just a General Typhoon with some rubber dampers on it, is ranked 8th overall. 
the general t in cooler value proposition noise normalized the general typhoon was ranked ninth it is now ranked 18th the hurricane was ranked 43rd it is now ranked 37th and the ventral pro was ranked 11th and it's now ranked 20th uh, cooler testing, 100% value proposition. Uh, the general typhoon was ranked 26th, retains that position. The hurricane was ranked 48th, retains that position. And the ventral pro was ranked 27th and retains that position. For CFM testing, noise normalized. The general typhoon was ranked 1st, it is now ranked 8th. The hurricane was ranked 21st, it is now ranked 14th. The ventral pro was ranked 2nd, it is now ranked 10th. CFM at 100%, PEW and fan signaling, the general typhoon is ranked 7th overall, the hurricane is ranked 37th, and the ventral pro is ranked 8th. And uh, CFM value proposition, noise normalized, the general typhoon was ranked 7th, it is now ranked 16th, the hurricane was ranked 43rd, it is now ranked 37th, the ventral pro was ranked 8th, it is now ranked 19th. At 100% PEW and fan signaling, CFM value proposition, the general typhoon is ranked 18th, the Hurricane is ranked 46th, and the Ventro Pro is ranked 23rd. Uh, six, er, case simulation test, 6-inch mark, noise normalized. The General Typhoon was ranked 2nd. It is now ranked 3rd. And you'll notice a little bit of drop in airspeed. The Hurricane was ranked 18th. It is now ranked 7th. So that is a big improvement for it, as well as an uptick in its airspeed. The Ventro Pro was ranked 1st. It is now ranked 2nd. Uh, noise normalized, case simulation test, the 11-inch mark. The general typhoon was ranked 4th, it is now ranked 10th. The hurricane was ranked 20th, it is now ranked 15th. And the ventral pro was ranked 2nd, and is now ranked 6th. This brings into a mark. So the general typhoon and the ventral pro are fundamentally the same fan. They're both NIDAC uh, general typhoons, just the ventral pro has rubber pads to tie to it, and a slightly different cabling on it. So this just shows the differences that you can get with fans between one fan to the next. Just small tweaks in uh, performance that are well within manufacturing error, so tolerance. But it does stack up, so it's hard to predict exactly how a fan would do without testing multiple of each type of fan. And I've only tested uh, one to two of each of these fans. All right, let's move on to the graphs. Now the value proposition, a 16th mark, noise normalized, uh, case simulation test, the general typhoon was ranked 7th, it is now ranked 14th, the hurricane was ranked 38th, it is now ranked 28th, the ventral pro was ranked 9th, it is now ranked 16th. At the 11 inch mark, noise normalized, case simulation test, the general typhoon was ranked 6th, it is now ranked 12th, the hurricane was ranked 35th, it is now ranked 28th, the ventral pro is, was ranked 8th, it is now ranked 13th. Let's get into the graphs. So now we're into the specific graphs. The first one is the case simulation test. This can be looked at in a couple key ways depending on what you care about most. So I'm gonna first talk about it in terms of what size computer case you're gonna get. So what size case do you actually plan on buying? I took key measurements that fit the average for a bunch of different size category of cases. So we got the six, the nine, the 11, and the 14.5 inch marks. The six inch mark is representative of a small form factor case, not the ultra tight compact ones that suck in air from the sides, blow it off the top, or suck in air from the bottom and blow clean through. I'm talking a front to back airflow style, uh, small form factor case. Also that is representative of a short throw distance. And by that, I mean if you're putting fans at the bottom of your case or at the top of your case to blow directly into your GPU, depending on where your motherboard is situated inside the case. That is a short throw distance, and the 6-inch mark would be very representative of that type of situation. The 9-inch mark is representative of a compact tower. Now, I don't have a specific one in mind, but just think like a Dell Optiplex like standard tower would basically fit that size category. So you're probably not fitting a well, definitely not current generation, full-size graphics card, but in previous generations, a full-size graphics card would be pretty tight inside that case. At the 11-inch mark, you're looking at your standard mid-towers, like the Corsair 500 series, the Fractal Mesh FI 2s, I um, can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but basically just when you think of a standard mid-tower, that's the, the mark you'd be looking at. And then you got the 14.5 inch mark. This is standard for a large tower. So you'd be thinking the Fractal Design Torrent, the fans in the front of the case blowing to the back. And these marks are, are the distance from the front of the case to the position of the CPU air cooler. So this is very important for air cooling. 
What you want is high and air speed, represented by these squiggle lines, that are entering the fan. What you don't want is essentially static air in front of the fan, because then the fan has to suck in the air, essentially pulling a vacuum to suck the air into it and then accelerate it through. If you're force feeding the air, meaning the air is already being pushed to it by the fans in the front, it's got a constant supply of air so the fan doesn't have to work as hard to cool your CPU air cooler. Now this is somewhat important for radiators, but it's a little bit different. So the main situation would be similar for radiators if we're talking a radiator at the back of your case as an exhaust. Um, if you're top mounting radiators or front mounting radiators, it, this high airflow doesn't matter. But in terms of uh, allowing the air to escape your case as quickly and easily as possible, it does matter in that scenario. But Jay-Z Two Cents actually did a video on this where he had all the fans blowing in, all the fans blowing out, and that kind of thing. And temperatures inside the case varied relatively little. But you'll see differences in your CPU uh, cooling temperature. So the temperatures inside your radiators and your water blocks and stuff like that. So you do want a good smooth flow of air going through your case to allow for optimal teach temperatures in your high heat generating components, even though it won't really shorten the lifespan of the other internals. Just an explanation there. If you are going to use your fans on a radiator, heat sink, uh, anything like that, that device naturally helps straighten out the airflow. So even if your fan tends to have a sh air that shoots out to the side like, uh, well, old style static pressure fans, it will naturally straighten out the air so it will come out in a very focused manner. Well, if you have it in a pull configuration, so your radiator on the front and your fan on the back of it, it's going to exit in the same pattern that the fan naturally generates. My personal opinion is you want all fans to have a nice focused airflow because when you hook it up to a heat sink or radiator, it's just going to be better to force its way through it rather than spreading out and not generating mm, as focused a pressure uh, envelope in front of the fan, we should say. And these graphs are just demonstration for how airspeed drops with distance. So this is actually for a ceiling fan, but it created a nice pattern. So as the air speed, uh, air is pushed down, the air around it naturally slows the, the, the air the fan is pushing and slowly spreads it out into a cone shape. Meanwhile, the air is actually propagating inward, slowly slowing the air on the inside in a different cone shape, creating it narrower and narrower. So what you want is, is the air to be as focused as possible from the get-go so that it has as little opportunity to slow down so it's better able to push through your case. Now this is excluding exit fans and stuff like that. So those fans do help maintain the airflow but having it streamlined from the get-go just makes everything more efficient for the exit fans at the end of well at the end of the road. So looking at the graph back to the graphs looking at them what we don't want to see is a fan that drops from six to nine in a very steep manner, meaning by the nine inch mark, the fan has lost almost all its, its air speed and then plateauing. That indicates a very poor performing fan that it spreads out the airflow very significantly. So idealized, the most perfect fan would lose no air speed front to back. But again, as we talked about over here, that is not gonna happen because the air is gonna drag on the other air. So what you want to happen is the line to be as linear as possible and as flat as possible, not a steep curve down. So now that I've given all that explanation, how do these graphs look? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to say that the General Typhoon looks overall better than the Hurricane. The Hurricane just doesn't have as high top end, especially at lower, well, actually no, the RPMs, if we match RPMs. So 1,550, there isn't quite a matching one. Uh, kind of between the red and the blue, and we'd see that the General Typhoon still looks overall better. So these were done at the 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% PEW fan signaling, and for the General Typhoon, it was done with the PEW and system curve. If you want lower RPMs on that fan, you need to use the voltage regulation as opposed to PEW and fan signaling. Just a disadvantage going on with that fan, and that goes true for the uh, Ventro Pro which is, again, just a general typhoon. So let's jump to the next graph so we can actually directly compare these a little bit more closely. So this is noise normalized distance through my CPU uh, through my case simulation test. Um, noise normalized. The control right here in this aqua color is my uh, is three parts A12X5, 
to one part A14. 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the 11 and 15, 14.5 inch mark, while smaller 120 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the six and nine inch marks. So by blending the two fans together, I've created what I consider a, it's not really perfect, but quote, perfect composite fan, where it gives high airspeed at, at, the, at shorter distances while doing a little bit better at the longer distances. So it just is uh, something for the other fans to beat as a baseline point. So now that that said, the Hurricane right here, well, it starts off pretty good, but then it drops off pretty steeply at this noise, no noise mark. Now, it is keeping up okay. I put it as an okay category, uh, unless you're looking at 14.5 inches. But um, it's overall not, not great, but it's okay. While the general typhoons in the green and red lines are slightly exceeding, but more or less matching, my control fan, mined at longer distances for bigger cases. They're not quite doing as well, but certainly uh, very good overall. How about, how are things at 100% PEW fan signaling? Well, the Hurricane is now just shy of my control fan, which isn't a bad place to be. The control fan is what would be considered a good fan. So being close to that puts it in that okay to good category. So if my control fan was, let's say a B, the hurricane would probably be around a B minus, maybe a C plus for 100% PW fan signaling. For norms normalized, just going back to it for a second, it would probably be a C, maybe C plus, depending on what speed. While the general typhoons are definitely A's at shorter distances. By the time we're getting at bigger cases, they're basically just a, they're equal to my control fan. Now, how does it compare against other things, other fans? So on here, I have this big grouping right here, ending at the Wonder Snail, is what I'd put into a good fan category. Now you look at the Wonder Snail and go, why would you consider that good? It's so far off, especially at that sixes mark. Well, because by the time you hit 14.5 inches, it's actually in the middle of the pack, meaning it's very good at focusing its airflow, which is one of the key things I'm trying to talk about here, which is why I put it at the bottom end of my good fans. While you have the... Uh, Silent Wings 4 Pro, which starts off really well and has a pretty steep downward curve, and it ends up being towards the bottom middle. So I put it at the bottom end at the 4.5 inch mark of my good fans. And then what I consider a bad fan is the NF-S12B. So now for the fans of interest to this video. Noise normalized, the Hurricane is sitting right here. It starts off quite well. Mm, kind of does still okay at the 11 inch mark and then it drops off. So you need to determine what size case you actually plan on buying as to whether this fan makes a lot of sense. As a case fan, you'd be buying it for its appearance. My opinion on it, at least. The General Typhoons, on the other hand, are right at the top, especially at that six inch mark, and then they drop down. They're still doing okay but they've become more of a normal fan by the 14.5 inch mark, not a top end fan. So they're overall pretty good. I'd probably give them an A minus. Let's say A minus overall. How about at 100% PEW fan signaling? I did include one additional fan. It's the Ice Scale Extra Thermal, and it just wins by sheer RPM. It's spinning at over 3000 RPM, so it moves a massive amount of air. The Ventro Pro, actually the Hurricane is right here. The Ventro Pro and the uh, General Typhoon are sitting right here, right towards the top of the graph, so excellent position. While the Hurricane is sort of the, not just below the good fans, so it put, it put into an okay fan category. Uh, how is it doing noise-wise? So a little bit of explanation at the nine inch mark, because it was taken at the nine inch mark, airspeed versus decibels. And the reason the 9-inch mark is because fans that have a spread out airflow tend to have the steep drop at the 9-inch mark. And once the airspeed drops below 0.5 meters per second, my anemometer becomes a lot less consistent at getting me good readings. So I wanted to get make sure the airspeeds were over 0.5 meters per second. So that's why it was chosen. Alrighty then. So the gentle typhoons are right here. Other than their lack of a hot, of a good minimum in PWM signaling, they are well with below, below my threshold for uh, noise, my noise normalized mark at 12 decibels by my readings, uh, room corrected. 
So they are definitely not too noisy even at their minimum RPM, which is excellent to see, and they produce great airflow sitting right towards the top of the graphs. While the Hurricane isn't terrible once you get up a high enough RPM. So it's 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then finally at 60% pedo and fast signaling, it becomes okay. So before that, it's really not very efficient noise-wise or at moving air. So this comes into where its blade design must need enough air moving through it for it to be efficient at moving air. And then it becomes pretty good. Not great, but pretty good overall. Hurricane 120. NIDAC and XPG Gentle Typhoon. Now we're taking a look at airspeed through my CPR cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. And on the left side, we have RPM versus airspeed. This is fundamentally a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this fan at pushing air through a thin stack. And we have airspeed vertical and RPM horizontal. And we can see that the Ventral Pro and the Gentle Typhoon are beating out my control fan here in blue, even if just by a little bit. The Hurricane, on the other hand, is sitting just a bit under my control fan, but I'd still put it in a very good category. The, and on both these graphs, the upper left is good, the bottom right is bad. I just don't think I remember saying that. On the right side, we have noise versus airspeed. So this is a noise efficiency graph. How good is this fan at pushing air at a given noise level? Airspeed is vertical, noise is horizontal. Every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So the Hurricane actually appears to do a little bit better here. At lower RPMs, when pushing through a heatsink, uh, this especially this thicker heatsink, it's doing pretty well overall, and it's matching my control fan until we get into the upper RPM range, where it's just a little bit under it for this given air speed. The Ventro Pro and the General Typhoon are sitting just over my control fan, and are bouncing around around it throughout most of these graphs. So it's overall a very good position for these fans to be in. Next, we have how do they rank overall in the subsample selection of other fans that I've tested, basically indicating top performers, mid performers, and poor performers. And a little bit of explanation to my key over here. So I did a series of tests on my CPR cooler, the Noctua U12A, to determine what air speed traveling through it equated to what wattage. So I had one fan hooked up to it, I let this, I put a CPU only load on it, I let it um, normalize at the temperature at 90 degrees where it's uh, thermal max, and I would let the wattage stabilize. I would record the wattage, the clock speed, everything else, and I would record the airspeed traveling through it, and I'd slowly um, adjust the PW fan signal down and let it stabilize again, and so I could get a rough estimate of what wattages equated to what airspeeds. So what? how is this data useful for you? Well, if you don't have the same cooler as me and you don't have the same CPU as me, the i7-11700K, this data isn't directly applicable. Meaning, um, if I upgrade from a fan that moves 0.5 meters per second of air to one that pushes 3 meters per second of air, I can now draw 250 watts. It, un unless you have the same cooler as me and the same CPU as me, that may not hold true. But what will hold true is the difference in value. So if you are upgrading from, let's say, the Cougar CF V12HP, which is pushing 0.5 meters per second of air through the cooler, and you upgrade to something like the Tough Fan 12 Turbo, you're now getting a full meter per second more of airflow through your cooler, which means your CPU unlocked will be able to draw a higher wattage for the same amount of noise. Or if your CPU is locked, you're not, your CPU will now run cooler for the same uh, amount of noise. Or you could take this extra overhead and turn down your PW fan signal so now your system runs even quieter. Your choice how to use that. Now, how much difference you get in airspeed, it's hard to say without knowing what kind of setup you have. 
um, and this is just my setup. I would like to add radiator testing to future videos, and uh, uh, thank you all for the help and support in subscribing to this channel and uh, help with uh, signing up on Patreon. But uh, now let's take a closer look at this. The hurricane is moving 1.2 meters per second ahead, the general typhoon is 1.3, and the Ventotro Ventro Pro is a slightly higher 1.3 meters per second there, noise normalized. So overall, great positions for each of these fans. They're all ranked very highly. The A12X25, a matter of fact, is in the middle between the two Gentle Typhoons, which is an excellent result to beat. The, of course, the AX, A12X25 was, is a similar blade design to the Gentle Typhoon. How are things looking at 100% PEW fan singling? Well, the Hurricane has clearly topped out. At 2,000 RPM, it's only moving 1.7 meters per second there. The Gentle Typhoon moving at a spinning at 2,295, so almost 2,300 RPM, is moving 2.1. I don't quite believe that extra 300 RPM would give me that extra offset in difference in airspeed. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? So the, the Hurricane just loses efficiency at some point, and that appears to be it. The A12X35 spinning at 1, or 2,100 RPM is sitting right here at 1.9 meters per second of air, indicating that the General Typhoon's extra RPM is helping it out pretty significantly. And if we take a look at the noise levels each of the fans are generating, the General Ty or the A12X35 is significantly quieter than the other two fans. Now we're taking a look at CPU air cooler, air speed versus decibel. And I know there's a lot going on, but we got the General Typhoon right here. We got the General uh, Ventral Pro just sitting slightly over it. The Hurricane is right here, where it gains a bit of efficiency, levels off, and gains a little bit towards the end. Actually, it gains a little bit at the end. So, but it, I guess it could actually just be, if it had a little bit more RPM, it might uh, beat out the 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 general typhoon it just doesn't have the rpm but without a stronger motor in it it's hard to determine that for certain on here we also have the a12x25 right here we have the silent wings 4 pro and this aqua colored line and we got the t30 this is the rgb for the hurricane argb 120 it has eight LED RGB lights. You can see that it's a different shade of color than my RAM sticks behind it. <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, this is just going to be the case for a lot of um, RGB stuff that uh, the colors are not going to be exactly the same between one brand to the other, or even between one device to the other. But this has a nice RGB ring around it. It has pretty good diffusion. Uh, on camera, you can actually see where the the lights are but in person it's not quite as noticeable but the uh, light on the inside where the LEDs individually are is much more noticeable and as I bring the camera I'm holding it manually you can really see the bright spots so um, take that for what you will I don't necessarily have an opinion on it uh, if you'll notice from my build I don't really have RGB lights in it so I'm not strongly opinionated yet, and I'm just trying to be pretty analytical with um, how I'm talking about these fans. Switching the fan over to uh, Unicorn Puke, or color changing, um, it's a pretty smooth transition as the, uh, um, the each of the RGB, or not RGB, LED lights uh, flicks over. Um, I care most about how well the fan actually performs as a fan, but it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about it at this time. This is how the fan looks from the back. It's actually one of the better looking fans from the back because they do incorporate a light ring in the back, unlike many other brands, as well as having the, um, well, the, the light shine through the blades from the back so it's not as bad looking as some of the other fans but it definitely looks better from the front uh, anyways uh, I guess that's uh, 
showing off the RGB. Let's move on to the next section. Next up, we have CFM testing. So CFM is just cubic feet per minute, and it is a volumetric flow rate. To calculate CFM, you have a tube. Mine is a circular tube. You could have a square tube. So to calculate the surface area of a circular tube, you have pi, you have r, and you, and you square r. So let's put r as feet, so that's feet squared. Then you have airspeed of the fan, and you measure the airspeed going through it. So now you have meters per second. So now you have meters per second times, or let's put it in feet per minute. Sorry, I want to change my units. Let's put it as feet per minute. You could just convert it if you want. So feet per minute times feet squared. So that's feet cubed per minute or cubic feet per minute. We did some math today. And the reason I don't like the test overall is if a reviewer is measuring it for how good a fan will be in a case airflow simul simulation. So the fan is actually the diameter, the diameter of the tube matches the diameter of the fan. So that means there's no room for the air to spread out. If there's no room for the air to spread out, the air is going to travel down the tube, which means the results for a fan that has a tendency to spew air off to the sides versus one that has a nice strong focused airflow are going to look much more similar than they do on my case simulation test. Giving you, you may end up with the right result, but you end up there for the wrong reasons which is important. Um, mathematically, it's important and scientifically to have your test test what you actually want to test so that you get the proper results. Otherwise, you're not really testing what you think you're testing. Now, CFM testing as fundamental is actually valid for certain things. If you want to measure the airflow going through your heat sink or radiator, perfectly valid. It makes a lot of sense. I could actually turn my air speeds in my... Um, heatsink test into CFM by just measuring the surface area of the heatsink fin stack. Um, perfectly valid if you want to turn, make your own at-home wind tunnel. You need the airspeed going through the tube if you want to generate your own at-home PQ curves. So you would have a testing apparatus with a little hole in it, you have some pressure sensors on either side, you would measure the airspeed, you would measure pressure differential as well as static and dynamic pressures. And you could find out all this data about how this fan is actually doing. Again, it's a scientific test, so it's very valid for Nocto and other manufacturers to test in that way if they're trying to generate the scientific data to try to sell you the product. But it doesn't tell you how good it is in a case airflow because it doesn't tell you how focused the airflow actually is. So that's the reason why I don't like this test for case airflow tests. But I got the data, we generated it, let's talk through it. It's very similar to the heatsink test. <coughs> the Hurricane is underperforming with its blade design, unlike we saw with the heatsink test. Uh, the Gentle Typhoon is right there, slightly beating out my control fan in terms of the noise values. The Hurricane is once again a little bit under my control fan until we start hitting higher RPMs where it starts to curve up, which makes me wonder if they created a high RPM version, if it would do even better. The General Typhoon compared to the control fan is overall very similar. Well, how do they compare overall against the other fans? Well, the Hurricane is definitely rated in the upper batch. The Ventro Pro and the General Typhoon are right next to each other, definitely towards the upper end of the graphs, with the H12X 25 beating out all three fans in the noise normalized results. At 100% PEW fan signaling, the A12X25 is right here, where the General Typhoons beat it out by a little bit, actually a good 10 uh, CFM, while the Hurricane is sitting well towards the bottom of the graphs. It would have a lot of ground to make up if it got a beefier motor. And then we have CFM versus decibel rating. The Hurricane is definitely sitting towards the bottom of the graphs of what I consider to be better fans, but it is slightly beating out the Silent Wings 4 Pro, which is a pretty good result overall. Um, the General Typhoons are sitting smack dab in the middle, and that's an all right place to be, especially because they climb pretty steeply to be towards the upper end of the graphs at higher RPMs. Now we're on to the value proposition. The Hurricane is a $35 fan, the Ventro Pro is a $26 fan, and the General Typhoon is a $24 fan. So despite the fact that the Ventro Pro and the General Typhoon are the same fan, there are a little bit of differences between the two fans in terms of niceties that come with it. That is up to you to determine if that extra $2 is worth the 
loss in value, basically. Because the two fans perform basically identically, but you get rubber pads and some better uh, clips on the Ventra Pro, so again, I can't make that decision for you. Uh, what I can tell you is this is the value proposition, and that is just performance per dollar, so meters per second per dollar or CFM per dollar. And these graphs are especially important if you're on an ultra tight budget. If you're trying to squeeze every penny out of your build because you don't have any money to waste, well, we wouldn't waste any money anyways, but you don't have anything extra to get on niceties, this is where you'd pay special attention. You want to get the absolute best bang for your buck. If you've got a little bit of extra wiggle room and you want to get nicer fans, so a certain aesthetic, uh, certain airflow requirements or noise requirement or you want a little bit of RGB then you compare this to the other graphs or your selected criteria and determine which best suits your needs again I can't make the decision for you and if you got unlimited budget buy whichever fan you want because value doesn't matter because you have unlimited budget anyways the General Typhoon and Ventra Pro definitely are doing better than average overall but they are still a far cry from the best of the uh, value performing fans. One thing I'm not able to test currently is longevity testing. I can't attest for how long any of these fans will run for without making noises, just run period, or anything like that. I would like to add that testing in the future, but once again, I would need help from viewers like you, uh, either hitting that subscribe button or by joining me on Patreon. But um, back to this, the General Typhoon third they're doing pretty good the hurricane is a much harder buy it is basically sitting right in the middle of where what i talk about as the average in terms of value proposition at 100 percent pedo and fan signaling the general typhoon and ventra pro are more in the middle of the pack they're definitely high-end performers but they're basically sitting in the middle of what i would call value overall that 1.46 1.42 is is just right in the middle and the 6-inch mark, noise normalized, and 100% p fan ceiling. link. How about things at the 11-inch mark? You'll notice several fans are did not finish. That is because their airspeed was effectively zero at the 11-inch mark. So I wouldn't recommend them for bigger cases. The General Typhoon and Ventro are overall doing fairly well here. Moving a fairly solid amount of air, sitting slightly over average, I would say. At 100% PW, PW and fan signaling, they're doing fairly well overall, actually. They're sitting above average, though not significantly, and but they're still a far cry from the top performers here. How about through the CPU air cooler? Well, the Ventra Pro and the General Typhoon are sitting above average. The Hurricane is sitting at average at 100%. Uh, all three fans are a bit below average, so the General Typhoon and the Ventra Pro are below average in terms of their overall value at the 100% p fan signaling mark. And I forgot to mention, this is all based off of standard retail pricing as I could find it on Amazon. As prices vary, the value of these fans fluctuates. So CFM, uh, noise normalized, and 100% p fan signaling value proposition the Ventra Pro and the General Typhoon are sitting above average, actually in a pretty good position overall. And at 100% pedo and fan ceiling, they're actually still a bit above average overall. So this is why I think it's important to do many different types of tests so that we can see how things do overall. So where does that leave me with these fans? Well, they aren't the best value, but in terms of their actual performance, they are a top performing fan for a relatively lower price. Now, if it were me, I would get the Ventra Pro. I'd rather get the rubber pads and the nicer clips all in black. But that's why the General Typhoon still exists with its mustard cables as a slightly less expensive option. Let's move on to my next section. And at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. Right here is the General Typhoon, and right below it is the Ventra Pro. This data does belong to me, however, if you want to use it for your own purposes, you are more than welcome to do so, to generate your own graphs and uh, charts version of it for cataloging your own particular way. However, if you do use my data in any sort of uh, publication that's written, journal, or video, I do ask that you reference me and my channel. I am the one who generated this data, and this data does belong to me. 
Um, if you've got suggestions for fans for me to take a look at in the future, please leave in the comment sections down below. If you have constructive criticisms for me on how to improve my videos, I will gladly take that. Just know that it may take a little bit of time for me to implement it into future videos. I tend to do a lot of testing at once and then uh, make a lot of videos at once and then take my time in um, composing them together. So just note that it may take a little bit of time for your suggestions to come into my videos. Uh, other than that, please subscribe, check out my Patreon. I really appreciate all the support that you all give. And, uh, well, have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.